aquas cream benzoyl peroxide and then hook up an occlusive using coconut oil that is basically what i do now it's all i can afford right so whatever and they all go a really long way for me so i don't have to keep on buying them so i was definitely going to be set like pretty much for the rest of 2022 and i was like that's what i'm doing for the rest of 2022 you know what i'm saying yeah what you guys i was so discouraged here we go park i, I did tell you it would happen south africa south africa like yeah 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 hello please lock please comment Please share and share and share and share and then please subscribe. Thanks. Hi there, in the name of Jesus Christ, how are you doing? It's your girl Crank Hey, I hope you're good. I'm together, I'm peachy in a knot and in a bunch. It is Saturday today that I don't know what of july i think it might be the second my fast ends on the 10th of july which is a 21 day fast so it doesn't really matter what the date is and so far as we're still gunning towards the 10th of july we're good are you good in the name of jesus i'm peachy it's quite a bit on my mind but before we get into it i just want to put a caveat out um there will likely be a power cut at 8 p.m it's on route 8 and so when it happens this is gonna be a podcast. This is gonna be a voiceover, and we're gonna just enjoy ourselves. Please <clears throat> hang ten with me, <clears throat> cause there's quite a lot chilling on my mind, and I like to get it out. So you guys will remember that I told you that I started using this one Sarah V product, um, like a moisturizer, and it was drying me out. Not only was it drying me out, but it was also causing my eyes to get like really hot and bothered or whatever. Because the ceramides and the hyaluronic acid mixed with the coconut oil, mixed with my benzoyl peroxide, all that stuff. I think it was just reacting really horribly. So I came up with this idea to put aqueous cream in the middle so that I could get moisture into my skin. Because I was getting super dry, super dry. And it was making me very uncomfortable. It was causing me to feel like my life is ending, basically. Okay, so that was a hyperbole. I hope you figured that out. Uh, and upon investing then, the aqueous cream oh my goodness look at my skin you guys look at my skin look at my skin look at my skin my skin my skin look at my skin look at my skin look at my skin my skin my skin what i care about you guys so i just want to like throw out there like some advice okay if at all you're going to be using those CeraVe products with those three ceramides in them and hyaluronic acid, don't quite throw it out with the bath water. If you've got, I've got oily skin in and of myself, but I've got super dried out. Just mix it with a like high intensity other moisturizer and you're going to get this thing going on with your face, with your face, with your face, your face, your face. Pop in, pop in, pop in other cheeks. Moisture in your face. Now, of course, this is a Christian con uh, channel. I do Christian content. And so, therefore, you're probably like, Arabo, okay, enough with the advertising of CeraVe. Of course, this is not sponsored. I only have 59 subscribers. I am not monetized. And nobody is even looking at me. So, for those reasons, I am, of course, not marketing CeraVe. What I'm marketing is the gospel. What I'm trying to put out there is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Herein lies what's actually going on out here in these streets. Okay. The CeraVe moisturizer that I bought for 219, not 50 something bucks, 250 something bucks. That's a lot of money. If you live in South Africa, you would understand what that translates to. It's a lot. It's a lot of money for a moisturizer uh, for the face or the body or any part of the body, really. That much money for a moisturizer is like, really, I'm okay. It's okay. I'll buy Vaseline. I'll just throw it like Vaseline all over my body and I will live. So given how broke I am. Given how much I basically am nowhere in life pertaining any financial ability, um, I started to regret buying that CeraVe moisturizer because I need the money. I was funded for a season by a guy that I was with for, you, you, the guy that I've been rapping on about. And I'm about to get into a chat about something of that nature similarly, na 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 na. But it's more like an anti-conversation as opposed to it being an actual conversation. Because I'm here to counsel people to walk away from that, okay? <clears throat> The guy who was my former fiance basically uh, funded that moisturizer and then he went and ghosted me, <laughs> disappeared. So that's like the challenge and the qualm uh, of ladies in the faith that are struggling with these prodigal husbands slash 
sun i call them prodigal sons because they're more like children guys and um it's just been like a really taxing conversation to observe and i have reached some amazing conclusions concerning it go check out my work that i did yesterday that'll help you gauge what conclusions i reached basically we shouldn't be doing it okay uh and ever since reaching those conclusions i've got joy in my heart you know like i'm walking on sunshine oh, okay i'm always walking on sunshine but more so am i on sunshine right now like i can see clearly now the rain is gone uh, so I'm going to be having an anti-conversation about that particular situation in order to help women also understand how much of a damper in the step of them females in their ministries these men can be. And I hope to edify you um, appropriately. Ne? Uh, that moisturizer, that CeraVe moisturizer that I purchased, how it ties into this whole thing, you know, I'm like big on analogies. It's on the fact that I bought a moisturizer for 250 bucks. Somebody then extracted themselves out of my life and I regretted buying it because I don't have money. I'm broke and I could have taken it some other longer way. That money, I mean, I could have bought another tube of benzoyl peroxide to keep them pimples at bay because I keep getting them, okay? I keep, I mean, this stuff is even, like, it even makes my pimples look so much better. Anyway, whatever, I keep getting this acne. So I could have bought another tube of benzoyl peroxide. I could have bought benzoyl peroxide face wash i could you know like i could have even bought uh, i don't know coconut oil because i use that but instead i bought the cerave moisturizer and i imagine that i regret it because the tub is still packed it's full it's full it's full it's full but now i am such a big fat chunky punter of that particular moisturizer that i even gave a portion of it to my mom because she's an aged woman and so um i wanted her to benefit Make no mistake, I am a very heartbroken child of the living God that's been persecuted by her family too. But that doesn't mean that I, upon an encountering something beneficial, don't share it because my family members have broken me. It's like, don't repay evil for evil type setup thing, you know? So I blessed my mom with like a portion of my moisturizer and I brought her into the equation precisely because I wanted her to keep buying it. Uh, so if I can bring her into the picture, she's going to keep buying it. And on top of that, it's beneficial for her. Look at me, spunky. Ah, that's my face. Has my face not been looking kind of dry these days? It has. Have I not been looking kind of crusty these days? I have. It was that CeraVe moisturizer. It took away my spunk, my youthful pizzazz, whatever you want to call it. I had regretted. I had regretted. And I didn't even buy that moisturizer because I was trying to get something anti-aging or whatever. I just wanted a good moisturizer that was oil-free. Because I thought that maybe that was what, that was what was contributing to my acne. That moisturizer that I bought for 250 megabucks, megabucks, I was about to throw out the entire tub. Well, I wasn't going to throw it away. It was just going to gather dust, okay? Um, I don't know. Maybe I would have donated it to charity or something, but it was a full tub because I've only been using it for my face, not for my body, even though it is apparently also a full body moisturizer. What? You want to look crusty in winter? Wear that moisturizer without adding something on top of it. I've been mixing it with coconut oil. That was not enough. I needed something that had a lot of water in it. A lot of water, so I mean, why not go aqueous cream? Hence, it's called aqueous cream, word aqua speaks of water right aqueous cream made all the difference i was gonna throw that moisturizer away now nah, like i said not throw it away but just kind of leave it to gather dust uh until by happenstance like happenstance i decided that i'm stopping using it so i went back to applying um to basically having my three-step process where i would wash my face and then benzoyl peroxide and then uh what no not benzoyl peroxide first but aqueous cream Benzoyl peroxide and then hook up an occlusive using coconut oil. That is basically what I do now. It's all I can afford, right? So whatever. And they all go a really long way for me. So I don't have to keep on buying them. Um, so I was definitely going to be set like pretty much for the rest of 2022. And I was like, that's what I'm doing for the rest of 2022. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What? You guys. I was so discouraged. There we go. Park, I, I did tell you it would happen. South Africa. South Africa. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so this light over here is going to die as well as we continue to speak. But like, guys, we're just going to talk. Now we're going to talk. Like, there is a... Even guy, mm, don't nobody move, please. Like, even when there's a power cut. Even when there's a power cut. You can still see the glow in my face. Look. Look, guys. Please look. Don't look away. Look. Look ahead. Look. Mm. Hey, Batung. Please don't look at my acne, because that can be very distracting. But look at the pop. Look at the glow. Look at the pop, 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 pop. The pop, you guys. 
you're not gonna be able to see the pop for much longer because this light is probably gonna die then we're gonna have just like a, po a podcast only only light um but i'm joyful so we're gonna like not be so sad about this park cut which happens to be by the way the third one today south africa south africa i'm leaving you because jesus christ is gonna make a way for me to leave because he's the way maker miracle worker promise keeper that in the darkness my god that is who you are leaving but not before finishing this conversation guys that whole situation ne? Aqueous cream in the middle. I had like I told you the three-step process where I had like just wash my face when I'm done with the washing And then I applied aqueous cream and then benzoyl peroxide on top I find that the benzoyl peroxide is quite harsh if you put it on directly onto the face on the continuum on the container of the tube It'll tell you to apply it first and then put on other moisturizers, but I find it just absolutely taxing on the face uh, so I put first my, my moisturizer then I put benzoyl peroxide then I put a, an occlusive on top which is coconut oil right for me and oh if I tell you if I tell you if I tell you look at I literally same night I looked in the mirror so like there's a mirror right next to my bed here where I'm chilling and I was like oh goodness God. even looking now I'm like oh my word I look in the mirror right you guys and I'm like did I adjust a reverse aging by like 10 years did I just reverse it by like 15 never mind 10 did I just defy gravity what is going on that moisturizer had so dried me out that I felt like I was starting to look my age I'm 37 years old I was crying inside because I was starting to look my age we have this benefit as black people called melanin and it makes us age at a slower rate types it up thing and if you duck the sun like I've been ducking the sun all my life precisely because I'm a darkened complexion girl and there's colorism in the black community if you have done all of these random things you can safely if at all as well you have kept your weight at a minimum as a black girl look like 28 at 38 you know 28 at 42 like it's totally possible and i've been defying those odds i've been killing it you know what i'm saying and i've been feeling like hey, you can take away my my freedom and everything that i've ever loved you can but you can't take away the fact that i look 10 years younger mm. yeah well ever since starting using starting using that cerave moisturizer i've been feeling like i'm starting to look my age i've been feeling like you know i look like a 30 something year old woman like a 30 something old woman and i'm like look i'm cool to be a 30 something old woman but i'm not cool to look my age because it, it's better to like you know defy gravity than have to like capitulate to it i mean why lie you know what i mean so i look in the mirror and i'm like i found my 20 something year old skin again here it is no wrinkles again not that i ever had them but like i was so dry that i looked aged i looked aged and i was like is somebody bewitching me so that i age overnight is this what's going on and i was crying decided to stop using the cerave moisturizer only because it was drying me out and was burning my eyes it was burning my eyes i don't know why it was burning my eyes but anyway it was burning my eyes so i decided that i'm just gonna like stop you know what i mean and then the process that I employed was basically defaulting back to the way that I used to do things. Pretty much the old school fashioned way. I just went right back to my three step process. Moisturizer, benzoyl peroxide for the acne, color uh, occlusive because it's winter with coconut oil. Uh, boring but you know it's proven to be you know, to work it's tried and it's tested uh, even though I don't get perfect results with it I get at least the best results and then I look in the mirror and I notice that my skin looks better than it did before I started using the moisturizer it's almost as if though I've been plumped up it's almost as if though this very expensive acid called hyaluronic acid that everybody's been talking about in all of these cosmetics um, commercials like they were getting somewhere like they were coming from somewhere I remember even thinking hyaluronic acid schmaluronic acid like everybody talks about it so much and i was like whatever just use some other humectant glycerin and you'll be fine because this hyaluronic acid thing is overrated i didn't look in the mirror and guys i have only been using this green this cream for three weeks or four weeks like a month or something like under a month and i look in the mirror like even now you guys like even now i'm like <laughs> yo i'm popping I'm popping. This is so unfortunate. This like pearl cut thing is just really killing me right now. Okay, my skin looked really good. My skin was fresh. It was dewy. It was glowing again. It was back to what I loved it to be. I'm an oily skin girl, and I'm grateful for all of the oils in my skin because they've always given me that dewy, um, shiny look. Like 
you know, glowing. Shiny is probably not the right word. Glowing. It's always made my complexion glow. And I, I have a bag. Even in winter, my skin glows because I've got a very oily skin time. But with this moisturizer, no. So I decided then um, that I'm going to stop it. And as soon as I did, I wore just one night worth of putting on aqueous cream on my face. There was just this massive transformation. And I realized that the problem was not the hyaluronic acid cream or rather that CeraVe, that CeraVe moisturizer. The problem was in the fact that the pairing was all messed up and I had neglected to bring into my face that which, it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Water, moisture. I realized that by simply adding more moisture on my face, that which had a particular purpose that has been fashioned by clever people in a laboratory that know what they're doing, actually does work. It's not that they lied to us. It's not that they're selling us a gimmick. It is rather that there is no wisdom in anticipating that a flower is going to grow if at all you don't put water in it if at all it has everything else that it needs like the right soil conditions like the right weather conditions if you do not water it it's not going to grow so my face blossomed like a beautiful sunflower all right blossomed purely because i added some water to it I brought in some aqueous cream and if I tell you it is so cheap it is really cheap it is precisely why my mom buys it she gets it in bulk at Diskim and it like moisturizes everybody's bodies we tend to mix it with uh, glycerin as well and we're home safe no need to go all hard knock heavy you know with anything it's and also it, it has no fragrance it's just the cheapest moisturizer and my mom is like one of those old school women so for her it's like if it works just like use it you know what I mean She's not going to go out of her way to try and like bend, break bank just to buy the latest moisturizer on the market that everybody is falling in love with for the whole family. It's like, whatever, I'm going to buy Vaseline or I'm going to buy aqueous cream. So my mom buys tubs upon tubs of aqueous cream. So if it was up to me, I would buy Body Shop Body Butter, but I don't have a job. So my mom is like, you don't have a job. So use a uh, hyaluronic, what's this? Use aqueous cream. I've been lamenting and having big fat chunky qualms with that aqueous cream because it's not my Body Shop Body Butter. I would much rather have my body butter. But this time around that aqueous cream came through for me. It came through for me. Old school habits of a woman that refuses to get with the times and buy better moisturizers worked for me. They worked for me. Aqueous cream is as water-based as you can get. Water is first ingredient is water and it prospered to help something that is expensive, that is purchased with the sole prerogative of improving something in your face. With me, I was trying to run away from oil in moisturizers um, and it, it, it brought all of this. It improved my face and restored moisture to my face and the restoration of that moisture made me realize that everything that we are struggling with hey hey crank cat don't distract me man why must you always distract me every single time when I start working um, the the, 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 okay, what is, yeah, Aquas Cream, I made mention of the fact that it's, um, it's cheap, and my mom buys it in bulk at Diskim. Well, you know that song, I think it's Jenna Jackson, if it's not Jenna, then, like, stand corrected, it's okay. The best things in life are free, and now that you've discovered what you mean to me. Mm. The best things in life are free. The best things in life are free, and the best things in life are not only free, but they're essential. For everything else to work the best things in life are not only free or super duper cheap but they tend to be essential for everything else to work here it is that the super expensive cream is now a worthwhile purchase in my understanding only because okay crank head please go out because you're distracting me right now only because I got Um, I decided to default back to what, to, to what it is that I used to do because my face was getting super dry and in defaulting back realized it wasn't broken but then I also realized that my face did not look this good my skin did not look this good with just a three-step process that I highlighted above it has improved meaning that the entrant into my life of the CeraVe moisturizer has benefited my skin it has greatly improved the appearance of my skin so what then to do i then decided that i am going to carry on with the way that i was doing things when i was using using the CeraVe moisturizer but this time around i'm going to add a layer of moisture in there um what is this aqueous cream so this time around 
I washed my face, I put on the CeraVe, uh, I put on then the aqueous cream, following which I then put on the benzoyl peroxide. I let that chill for like a minute and then I put the occlusive on top because I need the occlusive, it's winter. Plus I love coconut oil, it's just, it does stuff for me and I'm like, yay, thank you. All right, cool. Despite having oily skin, it works out for me in particular. You don't have to go out like that. Uh, this is not so much a beauty channel as it is a gospel channel. Um, you can go, there's plenty of these influencers on the internet to help you understand what's one of the benefits of coconut oil, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing the gospel, right? I therefore have that, that layered process now that I'm doing where I'm adding the CeraVe and I'm, I'm half waiting for my face to be like, oh, it was too much garabo, too much garabo, too much garabo. I'm waiting for my face to dry out again. I'm waiting for my face to be like, mm-mm. You know what I mean? But no, it's not happening. There is still a glow and a spunk and a like, hey, what are you doing today? Like, we're chilling. I'm happy. I'm happy with the way that my face is going. So I realized that the decision that I made, I was scared on the day when I made it, right? I'm broke. I'm poor. I don't have anything to my name. Everything literally bites. So when I was purchasing this at the Diskim, that would be the ten amount of a pharmaceutical company. When I was buying it at the store, at the Diskim, I remember standing there and I prayed like in my mouth, in my mind. And I was like, Lord, this thing is expensive. This thing costs two, oh, like 250 bucks. I don't have money. Please help me choose right. Because there was like a plethora of them. There were quite a few of these moisturizers that I could get from CeraVe. I wanted the CeraVe because it had been marketed to me very well by these beauty vloggers that I keep on talking about. So... I was like, please help me choose the right one because I forgot which one it is that the one lady spoke upon. And on top of that, please let me know if, you know, just like give me some kind of a hint or a nudge in the spirit. If at all, I shouldn't even get it at all because I am literally spending my last money. So you will remember at the time when I was buying the moisturizer, I was basically uh, stockpiling, expecting a dry season to come because I was already going at loggerheads with the only person that was financing my life. It was this guy, right? So I was stockpiling. So for me, I was like, Father, if I buy this 250 moisture box moisturizer, it's big. The tub is about that big. It's a back there. I'm not going to go get it. Uh, maybe I'll one day I'll come and show it. It's about like a, a tub that big, that, that round. Uh, so therefore, if I'm using it just for my face and I don't apply it on my body, a whole year, maybe even a year and a half, that stuff can last me. So it was like the 10 amount of stockpiling. I asked the Lord, low key, like, please don't let me make the wrong purchase because this is not the kind of stuff you can return to the store. So I brought it after. Uh, that's what I did. Pick this one. Out of a myriad of them and frankly the reason why i picked that one was because it was on sale it was 256 bucks on sale the real price i think i think was like 360 something ridiculous like this thing is expensive so for me it was like you better be with my buck you better be with my money brought it home and of course it disappointed the living daylights out of me you know what i'm saying like i'm not i wasn't happy it made me dry and i forced with it i pushed with it because it was so expensive i was like i'm gonna use it you're gonna work for me you're gonna work for me okay uh but then it just got to a point where i was like girl mm, no nah, it's not you know all those actives operating on your face all at the same time they're just like doing more harm than good like get out you know get out overkill like step so i stepped i stepped i finally accepted i let go you know i cut my losses i grieved the money and i just yeah and then the next day use the right combination and pow here it is now that i realized that the purchase that i made god actually heard my prayers the Father in heaven heard my prayers, you guys. The Lord heard that small little brevity of a prayer that I made at the disc camp, chilling over a whole bunch of CeraVe products, and the one that I chose just so happened to be a miracle bomb for my face. So now I know, in the future, CeraVe all the way. Yeah, that was a rhyme. Okay, I know that now because Christ heard me. The God of small things, the God of big things, here and last, the small thing that I was praying about, and he heard me, and he heard me, and I brought it home used it all wrong and the father in heaven who had charged me not charged me sorry but who had given me an answer to prayer when i was praying over product at the storm is omniscient so he knows all things he allowed me to buy the product knowing that it's going to work for me but he also knew that there is a way in which it's going to work for me there are steps that i have to follow there is a uh, an itinerary that i have to stick by there is a routine um I cannot just apply it blanc, just on my face. I've got to mix it with moisture, with other moisture. It calls itself a moisturizer, but it doesn't really moisturize. It's more like a, an anti-aging cream or make the skin glow and pops uh, cream. I, I'm not really fighting 
wrinkles, you guys, but just a very dull appearance. You know, like when you're not glowing or spunky, you don't look like you look like you've just woken up after only sleeping for an hour. There are creams that kind of give you that vibrancy back. So for me, it gave me a vibrancy back. I'm grateful to the most high that I'm yet to struggle with, with wrinkles. And I'm not looking forward to that day. I know it's eventually going to come. Uh, but in the run-up too, I would also like to do what I can to avoid them. You know what I mean? To like slow the progression of them. So if I just leave my skin super duper dry, it's eventually going to crack. I mean, even though black don't crack at some point, if you don't take care of it black, it's going to crack. You know what I mean? So I wanted something to bring back that vibrancy, that youthful spunk, that glow. Um, and this, this did that for me. That happened. But the Lord knew that in the beginning of the utilization of the product i'm likely going to use it all wrong uh, not likely i'm definitely going to use it all wrong and so by trial and error you know on and off on and off he eventually led me to the path that made me realize that this is the best thing decision that i ever made there at the disc cam for my skin hey hey are you feeling reached by my content on youtube if so you might be interested in checking out my tweets as well alongside reading my content on my wordpress account alongside checking out my shorts on tiktok they're all in the description box below please enjoy the next coming content bye he was a lamp to my feet and he displayed himself faithful to answer every single prayer because I, I mean, guys, there are prayers that we send up to the heavens that are half-hearted because, not even so much half-hearted, but because you're saying them with a broken heart, you know? You are discouraged and you're feeling flattened on the ground. You are just like, oh God, please help me. You know how the Bible says, an effective, a fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What then when you don't have energy? Like when you're so beaten down by persecution, when you're so beaten down by sorrow, by sadness, by pain, that you can't bring, you know, go down, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for ABC. I, you know, like when you're in that fasted mode and you're even like blurting out tongues type thing. If you can't do that, if, if you have already said your effective fervent prayer, that avails much. But it's been a minute since you've gotten that answered prayer. And so you're discouraged, you're kind of flat. And then you, you, you just kind of breathe these, you know, flattened, tired type prayers where you're like, God, please help me just deal with this. I'm having such a hard time. Father, I can tell I'm being attacked by demons. It's heavy. Father, I can tell that I am being pushed to do something I don't want to do. Lord, please give me strength. Lord, Lord. You say them under your breath even and you feel as if though God is not, is not going to hear you because you, you feel abandoned. You feel forsaken by the lord in the same way that the lord himself on the cross felt forsaken by the father right um and so what happens then when disciples feel forsaken and so their prayers are kind of um you know fluffy banana peel and lackluster the lord remembers that we are made of dust and so he has compassion on us oh you of little faith that's what he said to peter when he took his eyes off jesus did the lord let him drown no he fell because he took his eyes off jesus he sunk, he, he started to sink. He was walking on water at first, for he had faith and he was staring into the eyes of Christ. But then he looked down and he started to sink. And then the Lord rescued him, of course, you know, hurled him back up again. And what was the response of the Lord? O oh, ye of little faith. Did the Lord not rescue him? Did the Lord let him sink? Did the Lord let him drown because of his little faith? No, the Lord merely rebuked him and said, you have little faith, but despite your little faith, I will take you into the boat that you might be rescued from basic drowning, right? The Lord also knows how difficult it is um, to stay strong in tribulation, given our flesh, given this body of death that we have Romans 7, that we are warring with, given how much we are always fighting with the flesh. He um, understands that we are going to struggle to adhere to the scriptures when it is written therein that we must not be anxious for anything, but in all things by prayer and supplication, make our requests known to God and his um, peace, which transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. He knows that it's going to be hard to abide by the fact of the, uh, by the fact that we walk by faith and not by sight. It's starting to get really cold because um, my electric blanket is off. We walk by faith and not by sight, right? The Lord knows that these are the... Oh, by the way, that light might just switch off on you, in which case we're doing a podcast. I just have to put those caveats out there perpetually that you might not lose yourself, lose me, 
get away because now I'm you don't you don't see me okay because I can see it's getting dimmer and dimmer anyway back to the point um the Lord knows that he has given us these commandments and these charges to walk in this way do you understand uh but he also knows that we are making war with a dead body flesh that is just brittled with sin that we have to put to death the deeds of by the Holy Spirit and that sometimes we struggle with the Holy Spirit hence why it is even possible for us to grieve the Holy Spirit um so we don't we fail we fail abysmally at doing what is rather the godly thing to do so to have faith um then is the godly thing to do of course and to lose it is the ungodly thing to do for without faith it is impossible to please god uh but when we stick to jesus in spite of how much we feel doubtful it's not like we've lost faith because without faith is impossible to please god it's that our faith is little so what has the lord done he's amazing right what has father done he has said that faith even as tiny as a mustard seed with it you can say mountain move and it'll move whether you can say mountain jump into the ocean and the mountain will jump into the ocean so the lord has made it possible for the human race's worth of believers to get what they ask for in prayer even if they pray with little faith it's the faith is little but it's there just to know that he lives he exists like you don't throw in the towel you don't apostatize from christianity you don't walk away from Jesus. We are about to do a podcast. I can tell. It's getting so dim now. We can we we are um what is this? Uh, struggling. Uh, sorry, I'm losing my chain of thought, but we'll regain our bearings again, okay? Uh cuz I'm getting distracted by this darkening situation. The Lord knows what it is that he has put in us in order to get to the very end. He's given us all a measure of faith in order to get wherever it is that we need to get. So when then we hold on to him, but we feel like he's not going to have me. He's not going to have my back. Or tomorrow's not going to be a better day. Or I'm not going to get that thing that I asked for in prayer. But hey, at least I'm going to heaven. Like if we hold on to him, in spite having doubt concerning everything else that he can do for us, it's little faith. It's faith. It's there. Abandonment of the faith is not a thing. You haven't apostatized. You haven't walked away from the faith. You are not therefore flagrantly walking about these streets in sin. You're not going back to fornication. You're not going back to all these random things you are doing. You're still living a holy and above board life, but you're doubtful. So your prayers are kind of lackluster. And some God, if you would be great, and you know, like, please help me. I'm struggling. And you're dragging yourself through the mud. And you are partially even um, unbelieving of what it is that you're going to get in prayer. Know and understand that that is not the tantamount of what happens in the book of James, where it is written therein that do not imagine that if at all you pray, but don't believe that you're going to get what you ask for in prayer, that you're going to get anything. For such a person is unstable, double-minded, and um, everything that they ask for in prayer is not going to be answered them. That speaks to people who have no faith at all. Uh, randoms who get on their knees and pray to a God that may or may not exist, uh, and they're even testing if at all maybe he might respond. The kind of person to try a sangoma, that would be a, a witch doctor. And if that doesn't work out, then they try Jesus. And if that doesn't work out, then they try, you know, voodoo. If that doesn't, that's not the tantamount. Uh, sorry, that is what it is that is being spoken of in the book of James. When you ask God in prayer for things like jobs, and then you don't get one within the time period that you have basically desired to get it. And then you go to a sangoma to help you get a job. That is a person that doesn't have any belief at all. But if at all you have asked the Lord for a job, like Arabo has so very many times, um, and you don't get one within the time period that you desire, but you hold fast to Jesus, and you pine and you moan, and you keep on asking God for a job, but it doesn't come through, but you're holding on to the faith. You are holy. You are consecrated. You're not fornicating. You're not falling away. You're not visiting a sangoma for it. But you're just like, eh, he's probably not going to answer. That's not the tenement of being unstable in all of your ways. That is the tenement of having little faith. That makes you like doubting Thomas. It makes you like the dude that wants to see the holes in the hands of the son of men. And so God then shows him the hands so that he can believe. However, you know, you would have been better off if you had believed without seeing. Because blessed is the man who believes and yet has not seen. So that little tiny faith that keeps you, you know, girthy in Christ. You still adore the king, but you feel like the king is not going to come through for you in a, whatever prayer you have out of your mouth. Um, that gets you responded to that the Lord might display himself faithful. It is written in Philippians somewhere that he remains faithful, even though we are faithless for he cannot deny himself. There we go. Complete darkness podcast mode. I hope you're still chilling with me. You guys, let's ride this out. Okay. We're probably not going to ride it out together. I'm likely going to stop talking before the podcast is over and then go in the house and eat there. Cause there's a gas stove. Um, but the, this is the story of the South African situation. I mean, we, you know, life. Anyway, moving on. Righto. So with that tiny little amount of faith uh, that is chilling in your heart, the Lord still hears you. So much so 
that you move something so gargantuan as a mountain a mountain with it do you understand so huffed out prayers by true disciples who are exhausted who are weary from trial tribulation persecution attempts on their lives um nonetheless get hurt by god and they get hurt so bad so big so heavy that they can even move massive things like mountains and here it is that i'm at the disc him huffing a prayer out of my mouth not really even not even really sure that i'm gonna get what i asked for in prayer faithful servant of the living god i'm not busy living a sinful life and i come to learn today as at whatever date in july it might be perhaps the second or the third that what it is that i asked god for in prayer there at the disc camp even though it was said underneath my breath and it was frankly just a huh, little bit of a release of a whimper a whimper do you understand that's what came out of my mouth when i was asking god to help me choose the right product i wasn't fervent in so praying what it is that i was praying for that moisturizer i just merely released a whimper of a prayer and god heard that he heard that and I was made to remember that I prayed before purchasing the product at the discount. I was made to remember when I looked at my face after applying aqueous cream that 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 um I prayed for the uh, moisturizer that would be that will help me with my skin because I'm struggling with ac I'm struggling with acne and a whole bunch of other things. I released a whimper and I spent money by faith trusting that whatever it is that I chose is what God indeed led me to choose. And here it is that now I realize that God heard me, but he also knew that before I would realize that he answered my prayer, there would be a trial and uh, error season that I would go through where he would like be a lamp to my feet and show me what is the real process of, uh, or, or rather the steps that I rather need to walk in, in order for that moisturizer to really go the long way that I desire for it to go. Now, CeraVe, CeraVe itself, right, calls that moisturizer a moisturizer, meaning that you apparently don't need anything else with it. But we all have different skin types. We all have different reactions to it, different moisturizers. So you have to find your own thing. Uh, unfortunately, the dermatological industry does not always give, you know, perfect advice because, you know, we are all different. Something that works for one person doesn't always work for the next. So you need to find what works for you. And Christ knows what works for us, for he is omniscient and he loves us so carefully that he caters to every last one of these needs. So Christ knew how it is that this CeraVe moisturizer that did not come with a recommendation on the CeraVe packaging to double it with an additional moisturizer. It didn't even come with a caveat saying that be, war be warned it might dry you out because its very purpose is to be a moisturizer. If anything, hyaluronic acid is a humectant. A humectant. I should have known these things, right? So I can be very clever. During the time when I was researching for my skin, I found out that there are things that are called occlusives, humectants, and emollients. And I learned that a humectant draws moisture from its surrounding environment. Um, and so therefore, if you have got a, a nice occlusive or a nice um, additional moisturizer or on top of a, a humectant, you're good to go. But I had forgotten all that, you know, like I said, I can be clever. So basically my own wisdom did not even serve me in this time. I had forgotten that what humectants do is draw moisture from their surrounding environment and that oil does not count as moisture. <laughs> Aqua, anything at all that has a water base, that is what counts as moisture. So this moisturizer is packed with hyaluronic acid and three ceramides. Hyaluronic acid, I know for a fact, is a humectant, just like glycerin is also a humectant. So that's why my skin got dried out. It's winter in South Africa right now. It's freezing, Ugh. like no man's business. And we all know, and not only is it winter and freezing, but it is also very dry. Our winter is very dry, and so my skin needed moisture. Even though naturally I'm quite oily, I was not quite bringing in enough. So I just went on and put literally. Nothing but had that, that moisturizer. Um, aloe vera was also like a, a baseline moisture, uh, a baseline that I put on my skin because we have it in the garden. And so I'm just like, I'm going to slap it on my face since it's there in the garden. Why not use it? Right. So I would put aloe vera gel on my face first and then that moisturizer from um, uh, CeraVe and then benzoyl peroxide and then coconut oil. Oh, my goodness. Let me tell you what errors I have made that I could have figured out on my own, on my own, just by doing basic Aesthetician class or dermatology 101 based on what it is that I've studied online and a lot of what works for skin I could have figured this out on my own, but my own natural wisdom did not come to the party for me Jesus came to the party for me and now it's all adding up now. It's coming together in a nice little neat bunch. Okay 
uh, aloe vera is a humectant as well believe it or not like all of these humectants in one right a humectant is a humectant because it draws moisture from the surrounding environment aloe vera is a humectant so too is that CeraVe moisturizer mostly a humectant even though it has got facets of it that are likely um what is this emollient in nature uh yeah so it it, it functions both as an emollient and an and a humectant it also has um a, some kind of quality quant content of water in it hence it calls itself a moisturizer um but nonetheless it was not sufficiently moisturizing i guess there wasn't a big enough portion of water for it to be okay right and then benzoyl peroxide is not to be used as a moisturizer at all it cannot be used on its own it will just dry the living daylights out of your face out its primary prerogative is to clear acne and that's it it combats acne it's an antibacterial and whatever it is a five percent concentration that's the one that i use so nobody should ever use benzoyl peroxide on its own they will be dry like no it's not supposed to function as a moisturizer if anything they even recommend that you use it even just on spots not even the whole face because it can be so harsh on the face but i use it all over to prevent any new acne from coming on board right except uh, while avoiding the eye area so here it is that i'm putting um humectant number one aloe vera humectant uh rich moisturizer number two the cerave and then i slapped on benzoyl peroxide and then an occlusive and occlusive it can be anything at all that is oil based as function operates well as an occlusive and occlusive is something that you use to seal in moisture we all know that oil and water don't mix and so therefore if you put oil on top of your face it'll definitely keep moisture in your face um and coconut oil is 100 percent oil it has not mixed it is not mixed with anything else it doesn't have any any content of water in it at all uh and i went and put three two humectants on my face one super drying antibacterial and then i just slept oil on where then is this humectant gonna get moisture it's definitely not gonna get it from the surrounding environment one one because it's dry right now it's winter in south africa and two um because there is uh what is this like this occlusive that is on my face that is basically sealing in moisture into my face so where did the hyaluronic acid um go and grab moisture where did the aloe vera go and grab moisture from within me you guys i told you i've got an oily skin type and so because my skin is oily uh naturally i've got all these oils just coming out from my own natural skin i glow i kid you not even in winter the way that my skin is so oily this is the first time in my life that i've been dry like so super dry even um you know against my own natural dryness not dryness but oiliness right it was the first time ever and i realized only now though not prior to that i realized that this was because moisture was being drawn from my face and it was trapped it, it, it was like literally double hello double humectant aloe vera and the moisturizer and it was all drinking from my skin and there was this like layer of oil on top have you ever tried to use just oil for a moisturizer especially if your skin is dry if you've got dry skin and you use just oil you will have this film of skin on top of you that looks like it needs peeling or something you will look like you're in dire need of an exfoliator um you'll just get dry and scaly and the surface level of your skin will may when you smile it'll look as if though you're creating creases that it'll be dull the texture will just be nasty you will let you would understand what i mean um when i say this if at all you've experimented of the in this nature if you've got dry skin and you just put an oil on it my goodness you're gonna look like there's a filament of of some layer some additional leather on you that just looks nasty and it'll just keep on getting darker and darker as your skin exfoliates exfoliates and you will therefore have this very dull complexion yeah that's how i looked and i couldn't stand to look in the mirror my self-confidence was tanking my videos oh my goodness like i saw it in my videos the ones that i've been doing recently i was like is it because i'm overworked i mean guys i work a lot and so i've always got some kind of fatigue inside me but my goodness like i've never looked like that i've never been that dull like my previous videos from the date of this particular video or even the date uh, of day, day before or some three days back you will see that there is a dryness on my face that just uh, yeah the popping thing that i had going down for myself it just like it has fled me only just go check out my videos going back and back and back and back right <clears throat> so all that dryness wreaking havoc in my uh, life uh 
was was immediately corrected when I then decided to add this like layer of aqua, this layer of water. Uh, so now with aqueous cream in the picture, the humectants, the two humectants, the aloe vera and the cream that I had, the hyaluronic acid inside there and the three ceramides, they are now drawing moisture from my, um, what do you call this thing, Bobby? They're drawing moisture from the aqueous cream that is on my face. Uh, and so now the work that that cream was supposed to do all along and that it has been trying to do all along is now being done. It's gone to work. And now I'm popping. And now I'm healthy. And now my expensive cream is being is, is being displayed as worth my while. The occlusive that is coconut oil is now also doing its job nicely in that it's sealing in that moisture. So all day long I'm popping. I mean popping guys like this morning when I woke up uh, usually my sheets because I have got cotton sheets I unfortunately can't afford to buy silk or satin um, you know so they they draw a lot of moisture so in the mornings I had a, like it was especially dry when I woke up from having laid my head on my cotton sheets and I would look in the mirror and I'd be like oh I look even worse after waking up like what Ugh. and I started to think all these weird things like what on the day when I get married am I gonna wake up looking this gangster in front of my husband he's gonna divorce me type thing anyway whatever so um this morning however woke up Still having slept on my uh, cotton sheets who that just drained the moisture out of my face, but I was still popping. Like, you know, I wake up like this. It was still popping. My skin was still looking dewy and glowy in the morning when I'd woken up, even though, yeah, some of the moisture had been um, transferred to my sheets. Don't be grossed out. These things happen to all of us. Don't act better, right? Even though the moisture had been transferred to my sheets, I still nonetheless on the face was looking kind of popping. And I went in the house and I, I mean, just looking at every mirror that I tend to look at, like the one on the microwave, the one in the passage, the one in the bathroom, and Ruth there. And my skin was looking the same because different mirrors give me a different look. Uh, so I tend to check in all mirrors. If at all, I've got a flaw that I'm uncomfortable with. And I will know if something is really bad if on all three mirrors I look really, really horrible. The bathroom mirror is my most flattering. The microwave mirror is second to that. And then the one in the passage just makes me look like Shrek. Okay? So when then the passage mirror made me look <laughs> like the ugly duckling that had become a prince i was like what what in the world when my skin was popping on that like unflattering mirror i realized that i had encountered something bankable here i realized that right i saw that that moisturizer that i'm using was not the problem the problem was in my, my my process in applying it to my face it is what motivated me to recommend it to my mother because like i said i care about everybody even though everybody doesn't quite care about me because my mom is an aged woman and in and of herself she keeps on purchasing these creams from the store getting disappointed they have these actives in them so they make her skin burn and then she stops using it blah 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 so i was like this is something that's working for me so we've got similar genes me and my mom so maybe it'll work for her too so i've put my mom on the same regimen and she will then be the one to give me um feedback she's probably uh, i i noticed the results instantly but then again i've been using the cerave moisturizer for a month now right so my mom might either get results instantly or she might get them after a month like me but i've put her on the regime and she took my advice literally running with it running with it because i looked in her face and i was like ma look at my skin like look at how much it's popping she was like yeah it is what are you doing and then I told her about it and then she was like, uh, share it with me. So now uh, I've like, I scooped using a spoon, a portion. I was scared to actually use a spoon because I didn't know what the silver would mean for the chemical constitution of my creams. But nonetheless, you know, we, we did that because we don't have anything else. Our nails are not sharp or long enough and neither does anybody want to dig into coconut oil. If you tried doing that, especially in winter, you will get cut. Anyway, whatever. So I gave my mom a portion, um, like pretty much half of these things. And my mother then became what, guys? Answer me! Answer me! Upon giving my mom my creams, uh, in order to test on herself, I found myself a sponsor for my face care. I found a sponsor. My mother, it takes a lot for me to get things out of her, to juice them out of her. She has been treating me like, you know, randomly for a daughter type thing. But if I can incentivize her for helping me along, then I get far, you know? So I basically have got a guarantee of getting my CeraVe moisturizer and by the, when it finishes, which is not going to happen in a very long time because, like I said, I only use it for my face, right? But that moisturizer is for the face and the body. It's a full body moisturizer. It is so excellent, guys. What it's doing for me is so great that I would imagine that even if I were to apply it all over my body, but also mixing it with um, 
coconut oil and the uh, using coconut oil as an, an occlusive but aqueous cream as moisture that my skin on the body would also like starting to pop but i'm not about to go and experiment with the full body like that because i don't have money to keep on experimenting because it was just like one that tub will finish in a month if i use it for my body and i don't have the the, the liberty or the luxury to keep doing that but now i know for the future when i can afford my way that that is a, a very good cream to apply all over my body if at all i'm going to get rejuvenation of all of my body basically using one particular moisturizer don't forget to like comment share and share and share and share and finally subscribe